Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm just sitting in a little hut down in the war trenches. Um, not down on the front line as such, but we are in a trench now. I'm standing up here because I'm not being shot at. This is a recreated trench at the Apedale Valley Railway. So they've done quite a good job here. Let's actually have a look around the trenches. Now, the reason I've come here today is because we're having an Eastern Bloc car meeting. The IFA club is holding one of their meetings here. We're going to go on a road run later. So what we'll do, once we get out of the trenches, as I said, it's safe to do so, we'll go and have a look at the Eastern Bloc cars, and then we'll go for a ride in the train. So as we come up out here, you can just sit up on the hill, the Eastern Bloc cars. What we'll do first, though, is we'll just have a look at a couple of railway things I wanted to show you. So here we have a railway, typical railways you'd have found in the war. That shed is new, I think, and yeah, it's new. Let's follow, so look, it says crossing, so we would go up there to where the cars are, but let's just walk along the railway along here. Now, circumnavigating, or almost circumnavigating the field, is a railway known simply as the Field Railway. Now, I came to a gala at Apedale here a couple of years ago, and they actually ran as a one-off. They ran passenger trains on the Field Railway. So, um, have a look at the link on screen now see that video including a ride on the field railway so we've got quite a network of railway tracks here and um, the main running line which the, we'll have a ride on runs off into the woods up that way so we'll go up there later once um, the train arrives at the station it's still quite early in the morning so um, it hasn't the site hasn't actually opened officially to the public yet um, just the people who are displaying eastern block cars but we come to here Set points here. Here we have a loco, a little diesel loco. So, yeah, it's a motor rail loco. There's its, um, that's pretty not its work sound, but the, the number it's identified by. We'll sit on it. I'm not going to drive. At this point, I would be quite fun if I could, um, since I'm sitting in the driver's seat, if I took the handbrake off and uh, drove off up there. <laughs> That would really make um, a good video, but um, I don't know how to drive it. I'll probably have to put my foot on that pedal, and there's probably no no diesel in the loco. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to drive it, I'm going to leave it here. But we're going to walk up beside the track, and um, I can see another diesel loco, which I think the reason it's there is because it has a connection with um, the car meeting that we're attending. So we'll go and have a look at that. And um, we'll have a look at all the cars here. So my larders here, joined back up of other larders, and um, various Trabants. It's the second Eastern Block car weekend we've had this year. We had one up in the Newcastle area, which was great, where we went to the Railway Museum at Darlington. We went to Beamish. We did a road run around the North East. Today we're doing a road run around Stoke-on-Trent and Cheshire. And um, what else did we do? We went to the Tanfield Railway. That was it. And I did a few other things, so that, that was a great weekend. So the Field Railway is this railway here. So as I said, I was once lucky enough to have a ride on a very rare passenger train. So the Field Railway, it runs a couple of hundred yards down there. But it's more interesting to do this way. So you've got the, it says Railroad Crossing, all kinds of wagons and a few other locos there. And the locomotive you can see that's kind of displayed with the cars. That is built by Orestein and Koffel, a German company. So it kind of, um, you know, blends in nicely. So here we have German locomotive, German car. If you have a look um, down here, see, it says O and K, so Orestein and Koffel. Um, the locomotives here, there's, or most of them are owned by the Mosley Trust and they each have their identity. So if you have a look here, it's Mosley Trust number 74, but that's um, that's the loco, just um, its number that the Mosley Trust have given it. It's not its official number. I'll have to work out, I'll be able to find it out what it is, um, what its official number is and tick it off if I haven't already ticked it off. So here yeah, we have a Trabant. So we started off down there, down at the trenches. Let's have a walk through, see what cars we have on display here this morning. So, one of these locomotives, Trabant. Wartburg, the next car. Uh, we didn't have one of these at the North East event. That's one here. That's a Moscovitz, so that's a, a Russian car. And uh, another Trabant, Barkus. 
Cooper Wagon Trevant. Another Trevant. You may recognise some of these cars. Quite a few of them were at the North East event. Interesting Trevant there. Zafrajet, that was at the North East event. And then these, my larder and another larder, these were both at the North East event, so you may recognise them. This Wartburg here was at the North East event. Now, one of the things we were missing at the North East event, so I'm really pleased to see one turn up. We, had, we didn't have a Zastava or a Yugo, the uh, Yugoslavian car, um, you know, the, the people's car of Yugoslavia, so it's really nice to see a Yugo. And also, great to see a Lada Neva here. We didn't have any Nevas, so um, we just need a Lada Samara to turn up now. And then we've got, you know, the three main l Ladas that were sold in the UK. Whether one will or not, I don't know. Samaras have turned up at these events. Um, but, yeah, you, you nearly always, you tend to get Ladas like mine. Sometimes you get the ones with round headlights. Lada Nevas are probably the most numerous form of Lada you'll get on Britain's roads. Um, there's probably more of them than any other ones. And then there's various ones like mine, various other ones. You do get quite a few left-hand drive ones which have been imported. You have a Land Rover here, um, quite interesting. Um, not Eastern Block, but you know, it's, it's quite nice sometimes to see other vehicles joining us. Let's just have a little nose up here. So the, um, that looks like that was a coal miners, um, bought coal miners, taking them to work. So the Fields Railway, as I said, runs off down there. Over there is the station building, so that's what I'm going to go later on and catch a train. So the main line runs along there. The railway sheds are just down there. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to hang around, we'll see if any more cars arrive, and then soon it'll be time to go and have a ride on the train. Steam loco for today. Stan Hope. And number 13, which brought stock in. There she goes, she's off back to the shed. So, Kirsty Jerk. So, works number built in 1917. Yeah. So, I'm trained. So. So I'm going to have to go and buy my ticket and uh, we're going to go for a ride up the railway line. I've just jumped on the train, bought my ticket, so we're at Silverdale Station. We're going to have a ride up to Apedale Road, it's a nice little run behind a winning steam loco for me, so time for a ride up to um, Apedale Road. <laughs> here at Apedale Road, had a nice little ride behind Stan Hope, so winning loco for me, so I'm happy with that, I'm going to watch the run rounds, and then um, we're going to travel back, it's a nice um, assortment of narrow gauge carriages we have here today, so she's running around now, so I'm going to um, watch her come past, and then time to ride down back to Silverdale. Thank <laughs> you. 
had a ride on the train, that was good fun. Now, let's go and have a look in the museum. So I've got a um, very interesting museum here. I have been in here before, I've never actually made a video in here before. So I to see of um, various things to do with the potteries area, the circle train area. I'm not going to show every exhibit, but I'll give you an idea. It takes you right back to the very early times, the Roman times. And um, you can walk through. I find this fascinating. All the different types of bricks you could have got in Stoke on the area. Look, see they'd have the name. So it's, that's an Ibstock brick. I've just always... Um, it, it might come from the fact that um, my father once was a bricklayer. His father was a bricklayer. So bricklaying runs in my family. It's not something I've ever really got into, but I just think this is really fascinating. Just how many different bricks there are. Because, you know, you don't sort of think, you know, when you think every brick you see in a building, you don't realise, you know, underneath it, cemented in there, it is the um, name of the brick of the company who built it. Now, here we have some locomotives. That was the main thing I brought you in here before. We have a motor rail, like the one we saw down on the field railway. This one's called City of Gloucester. Here we have like a mining locomotive, so that would take a miners to their, um, you know, to work at the down at the coal face. Some fascinating maps. Oh, I came in here once when it was raining. I just spent ages looking at those maps. So it's um, it's it's not a very big museum, but it's a very good museum. Another mo locomotive here. Yeah, it's a Ruston company. Ruston's company builds locos. So, you know, where, if you were to come here, you'd, you'd want to spend longer. I'm just giving you a quick whistle-stop tour of the museum, but you, you can spend hours in this museum. There's, I'm just looking at everything. There's a miners' rescue service van. Get around here. And um, there's, a, there's a model there. This is a really nice model. Model of the original Silverdale station. So that would have been the standard gauge railway. Um, obviously now we have a narrow gauge railway, but the narrow gauge station um, over there, which is what's now called, it's also called Silverdale, is based on this station building. So that's quite a nice um, to see it recreated. There's a model looking down. It's, I know it's uh, reflecting, so it's not so easy to see, but that's like a pit, coal pit. So um, it's kind of the layout. It would have been underground, various miners' equipment. the interior of what it possibly could have been like in a miner's house when he had to come home. This would have been his lounge stroke dining room. And um, this is of another era, having a bath in the kitchen, because that's how it would have been once. And then that's like your little yard you've got, you've got your mangle for, you know, um, drying your clothes, they have probably gone to work on their bike. That's the hospital, because unfortunately mining was a risky business. Lots of injuries could have happened, so um, yeah, there'd obviously been a hospital. I'm going to follow our way around here. You can see there that, that, those blue things, their teeth, so that would have gone round and round and round and cut away at the coal, and then they'd have brought the coal up to the surface for use around in domestic and industrial around the potteries area. So. Here we are, back to here again, where these locomotives are. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and do something you have to do when you're in this area. I'm going to go to the cafe and I'm going to have some oat cakes for lunch. So it's lunch time for me now, and then we'll go and have another look at the cars before we go off on um, our drive around Stoke-on-Trent and the potteries. I've got quite an impressive line up here. What I'm really pleased to see turn up is this. This is a Fiat 125. So this is the car that effectively became the larder, or technically it was the 124 that became the larder, and the this is what became the FSO. So the Fiat 124 was slightly smaller, slightly different front, but that is re that's incredibly rare to see that. Although the larders are rare, they're quite common compared to Fiat 124 and the 125. So this is like a really mega spot to see so I'm really really pleased this turned up. I've come down to the engine shed the railway's very kindly given me permission to have a look down here. 
That you see there, that is their newest acquisition. It's an Avon side locomotive, um, and it seems they've already started on the restoration. I'll let you have a look at the picture I took of it earlier. So as you can see, it needs quite a lot of work, but you know, hopefully one day we'll be running again, we'll be able to kind of have a ride behind it. So here is where the train we travelled on would be kept at night, those cows. You didn't expect our loco was here and some of the other diesel locos, which have also come out, like, you know, we had that Oristan and Coppel loco went to join our fleet of Eastern Block cars. Here's some of the locos which are not out today. This loco here, have had a trip behind this one. Um, have a look at Lincoln screen now. Get to see that one in action. So um, that's that was that's a nice loco. This is what they call a well tank. So if you have a look, obviously the boiler. For those of you who don't know too much about railways, the tanks are usually on the side, or in case of Stanhope that's working the train, it's a saddle tank. The tanks over the top. But here, the tank is a well. It's down between the between the frames and the wheels. So hence the term well tank. It's down below. One of the numerous diesel locomotives. I don't know how many diesel they've got, but lots, maybe even a hundred. And then they've got this beast. This is built by Hunslet in Leeds. It must be their biggest locomotive. I have had a trip behind this one once at one of their galas. So this is a really nice locomotive. It's possibly one of the biggest two foot gauge locos. Certainly the biggest one there is here. And this is quite a well known loco. This is Joffrey. I think she's currently out of ticket. And when I came here, Last year, when I just came for a day out and a walk around the country park, had a trip behind this diesel loco. So I don't think I'm probably ever going to have every loco they've got here because they have got so many. But you know, working my way through, we come down here. It's quite interesting. These carriages, these came from the Fastino Railway, so they've brought them to Ape Tower. Once the line's been extended, then I would have thought they'd use these carriages for the longer ride. So have to come back again. Well, we'll, we'll keep coming back because I like it here. So, yeah, there's, all, there's always good reasons to come back. I think I've had this loco for haulage once. Um, it's another motor rail one when they ran train, passenger trains on the field railway. So that one I've cleared. And um, as I said, there's just so many. I, my knowledge of um, railways, I, I don't know all of these locos. There's just so many. There's a works, but I think it's possibly a German built loco. It's a funny one, it's really sort of tall and thin. Another motor rail simplex loco. This is um, 303, the one that's built by Hunslet. You can have a look in the cab. So, yeah, very impressive. Possibly is one of, the, certainly is definitely one of the biggest collections of narrow gauge locos in England. Possibly the busiest, bit biggest, and it's certainly one of the most impressive. Another thing I quite like is all these headboards they've got here of various other trains, you know, that they've run. Oh, that's the place I really, I'd love to have gone there, the KP Light Railway. It was um, in Leicestershire, it was the vicar. He um, actually appears in some Thomas the Tank Engine books as the fat clergyman. And he had a railway in his garden, a two-foot gauge railway, model railways. They had a steam loco called Teddy, which has since been restored to steam, a standard gauge loco. It closed, I think, 2005. I really wanted to go there, but, you know, when, when I discovered it, I was kind of too young to go anywhere on my own and just never got there. But now, if I knew it was closing, or I, I, you know, I'd go there. But, you know, so many railways come and go, but um, this is a railway that's, that's growing, so that's great. What I'm going to do, though, now is I'm going to have to go back to my car. We're going to go off on a road run. So what I'll do, I'll make a video on the road run around the Potteries and Cheshire, Staffordshire area. So that should be fun. I'm looking forward to that. I've had a great morning here at the Apedale Railway. Um, nice to get a winning steam loco. So um, it's my first narrow gauge winning steam loco of 2021. It's about the fourth one, I think, fourth winning steam loco of 2021. So... Um, yeah, time to go back to the car, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the Ape Dale Railway for hosting us and for a great time and allowing me into the shed to make this video. Do, you know, do come and visit. It's a great place. You've got the railway. You've got the museum, which we had a look in. They sometimes do underground mine tours. I've never done that. Again, I'm going to have to come back and do that. There's a great country park. If you, I haven't had time today, but if you walk up the hill, you get good views. So, you know, do come and visit Ape Dale. So it's a very, very interesting place. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment from in the shed at the 8th Dale Valley Railway. Goodbye.